the reason why I call my book This Changes Everything is because we find ourselves in this very difficult situation where everything on the table is radical. Either we face radical changes to our physical world, or we decide to intervene in the planet's climate systems with so-called geoengineering, you know, put sulfur in the stratosphere and fertilize the oceans to try to physically uh, uh, cool the planet. That's pretty radical. Um, or you do what I'm advocating in the book, um, which is you take the science seriously and lower emissions as quickly as we need to in order to prevent radical climate change. But to do so, that requires radical change in the political and economic sphere. There are no non-radical options on the table, so no one's really a conservative anymore. <laughs> no, but you support small-scale uh, farming, the type of which uh, many conservatives would have valued for centuries. Uh, you know, I mean, you support... A a kind of land care uh, tradition uh, that does cross political boundaries. The only political yeah. boundary it doesn't cross is the imperative of big business and corporate farming. It, it's definitely true that at the local level, when you have these battles over, you know, a massive new coal mine, or in my country in Canada, we have uh, a lot of uh, conflict going on over tar sands pipelines or, or natural gas fracking. Um, they do cross political lines in the local community, and you have you know, lefties, greenies coming together with conservative farmers. Um, uh, and what binds them together is this ethos of, of caring um, uh, for future generations, caring for the land. You know, I have a, a chapter in the book called Love Will Save This Place, which is a quote from uh, a wonderful rancher in uh, Montana, a goat rancher from a Republican family working together with local indigenous people. And she said, this is what the coal companies will never understand. They think what drives us is hatred of them, but they're wrong. It's love. Love will save this place. Thank you.